Welcome back. Today we will discuss range. Range is a very important performance parameter for an aircraft. It basically indicates how far an aircraft can fly with a given amount of fuel, or in other words, the minimum amount of fuel needed for a given distance. Now today we will solve the range problem for propeller aircraft. And as an example, I will again use the spirit of St. Louis, of which we already determined the performance diagram. In order to determine the maximum range of an aircraft, we should clearly define a mathematical parameter that we would like to optimize. So, for maximum range, we always try to optimize a parameter which we call specific range, and that is defined by the ratio of airspeed divided by the fuel flow. Now, if you would look at the uh, units of this equation, then you will see that this is essentially a speed, meters per second, divided by the fuel flow, and that can be expressed in either kilograms per second or by newtons per second. In any case, if you look at this, you can remove the second in the equation and you will find that the unit of this is either meters per kilogram or meters per newton. In other words, V over F indicates how far distance in meters you can fly with a quantity of fuel. So basically if we try to maximize V over F, we will maximize range. Now, so far, you've already seen the equation for airspeed, so that is more or less something we already are familiar with. But now let's have a look at the fuel flow F. By definition, we state that fuel flow is some kind of a parameter Cp, which we call the power-specific fuel consumption, multiplied with P br and br stands for break. So what does that mean pbr? Now let us look at, um, at a given propeller engine. Then we have a propeller, we have some kind of engine, doesn't really matter what kind it is, and the power this engine delivers to the shaft is what we call PBR. So BR stands for break and in the old days they used to have a break to measure how much power there was in the shaft. Now this power of course is translated by the propeller in a forward force T and if you multiply T with the airspeed you get power available. But in order to go from shaft power to power available, actually there is an efficiency factor in between. We call this the propulsive efficiency. Because of course we cannot efficiently translate all the shaft power into power available because we also leave kinetic energy in the air once the plane has passed. So, Essentially, we can state from this picture that power available is equal to this efficiency factor, the propulsive efficiency, multiplied with the shaft power. So let's go back to the equation where we have shaft power, so we can also say that P brake is power available divided by the propulsive efficiency. So our fuel flow we can also represent by Cp, which tells us how much fuel you, need, you require for each amount of energy delivered to the shaft, multiplied with Pa divided by the propulsive efficiency eta. Now we are 
typically speaking, consi we're considering cruise flight and therefore thrust should be equal to drag. In other words, power available should be equal to power required, which is aerodynamic drag multiplied with the velocity. So, if we um, then combine everything and we would write the ratio of V over F, this ratio we have to maximize, then we obtain that V over F is airspeed divided by fuel flow and the fuel flow is Cp divided by eta j times power available and power available is equal to power required. So this would be drag multiplied with velocity. So if you look at this equation you can actually see that the airspeed term cancels out. So this leaves us with eta j, propulsive efficiency, divided by Cp multiplied with 1 over d. So I have one nice equation here. Now for typical conditions, we can actually state that if you look at many different aircraft and engines, then for the range of flight speeds of interest to us, we can more or less say that these eta j and cp terms are almost constant. Now if we make this assumption, assumption you can see straight away that in order to have the maximum ratio of V over F, which will give us the maximum distance for a given amount of fuel, we need to have 1 over D at its maximum. In other words, we need the condition for minimum aerodynamic drag. Now that seems like quite a reasonable result, right? In order to get maximum range, we need to have minimum aerodynamic drag. And intuitively, you can see that this is a feasible result, and we'll see now in the lecture what that means for the performance of the Spirit of St. Louis. However, we are not done yet. This of course is a nice result, that you have to fly at minimum drag, but how should this pilot know how he or she is flying at the minimum drag condition? We should actually give the pilot a specific speed to fly at. Now if we have calculated the performance diagram, we can actually quite easily determine that speed. So let's have a look at the performance diagram of our example aircraft, the Spirit of St. Louis. Now, the aircraft can fly at a steady horizontal condition on any point of the power required curve. If you would draw a line from the origin to any point on the curve, then that would be an indication of the specific range, because the angle of this line with respect to the origin is in fact a measure for the ratio V over F, since V is on the x-axis and F is on the y-axis. Now this angle will be smallest if a line from the origin just barely touches our graph. From here we can read that the optimum airspeed for maximum range is indicated in the di diagram. Power required is aerodynamic drag multiplied with airspeed. So if we would draw aerodynamic drag instead of power required, the point for minimum drag is in fact the minimum of the curve. We would like to know which airspeed is optimal. And as you know, for each airspeed there is a specific CL to fly at, since airspeed is written 
as the square root of weight over s, 2 over rho, and 1 over Cl. So, if we know what the optimum Cl to fly at is, we will find also the optimum airspeed. Now, from our equations of motion, uh, we know thrust is equal to drag and lift is equal to weight. Since we are interested in the minimum drag condition, we should basically write out what drag is. Now, I've shown you before this little trick that I can multiply drag with lift divided by lift. Of course, that is equal to 1. So, if I take our equation of motion in the vertical direction, I will find that drag equals CD over CL times the aircraft weight. So, in order to have minimum drag, you can see straight away that this ratio, CD over CL, should also be minimum, or in other words, that the ratio of CL over CD should be maximum. Now that seems like a sensible result, because this indicates the condition where I get most lift per unit of drag. Now, if I try to find the maximum of an equation, I basically have to take the derivative, and my variable in this case is CL, because we know that CD is a function of CL. So CL over CD as a whole is a function of CL. So if I want to find the maximum of that function, I have to take the derivative of CL over CD and equate it equal to zero. Um, to make life a little bit simpler, you could also say, well, instead of calculating the maximum, I will calculate the minimum of this ratio and set it equal to zero. So let us write out what CD over CL in fact is. Now CD is CD zero plus K1 CL plus K2 CL squared. If I divide that by CL, then that gives us CD0 divided by CL plus K1 plus K2 CL. So, if I take the derivative with respect to CL of this function, I will obtain minus CD0 divided by CL to the power 2 plus the derivative of K1 to CL, which is 0, plus derivative of K2 times CL, which is K2, and this should be equal to 0. Now, that is actually quite a simple relation, and you can find straight away from this that the solution for CL would be the square root of CD0 divided by K2 in order to fly at the condition for minimum drag. And this is a very nice result because both CD0 and K2 are constant terms, so if you have the relationship between lift and drag, you can al actually calculate at which CL you should fly in order to fly at the minimum drag conditions. And once you have found, so this we can call the optimal CL, once you have found the optimal CL, you can actually calculate the corresponding airspeed. And this would then be, again, the airspeed equation 
weight over S, 2 over rho, and finally 1 over the optimal CL, which is square root of CD0 divided by K2. Now, all the terms on thi in this equation are basically constants if we consider a given aircraft weight and a given altitude at which we fly. So you can actually calculate the speed for maximum range, or I should say maximum specific range, analytically fill in the values and you find the number. Now this number you can calculate before you start flying, write it down in a pilot manual and tell it to the pilot so that he or she can look up this value and always fly at the most optimal condition for maximum range. Now, let us determine the optimal speed in terms of maximum range for our example aircraft, the Spirit of St. Louis. If we fill in the equation for CL we have just derived with the data of the aircraft, we obtain that the optimum CL is equal to 0.638. Now using this value we can actually calculate the optimum airspeed, which equals about 30 meters per second. Now see that this exactly matches the result we already determined graphically from the performance diagram. So we can calculate it both graphically or analytically. Furthermore, compared to the data reported by the predecessor of NASA based on actual flight test data, this value is actually spot on if you want to fly as efficient as possible. Now if I provide you with estimated constant values of specific fuel consumption and the efficiency of the propeller under consideration, then it is possible to calculate the specific range V over F. If we plug in the values, you will find that this aircraft can fly 8.4 kilometers per kilogram of fuel, which is about 6.1 kilometers per liter. Now, if you ask me, I think it is pretty neat that with a simple parabolic equation for the aerodynamics and two constant terms for the propulsion system, the efficiency and the power specific fuel consumption, we are actually able to calculate a specific range within 4% accuracy. Now during flight the aircraft weight actually reduces gradually. Now what kind of effect would that have on our results? Drag and thus power required are both a function of the aircraft weight, since we have drag is equal to CD over CL times the weight. In simple terms, one, we need less power for a lighter plane. So let me show you how the power required curves for the maximum weight of the aircraft and an intermediate weight as well. The optimum point for maximum range in fact changes. This means that Charles Lindbergh slowly had to reduce speed during his flight from New York to Paris. He had to closely monitor fuel consumption and control airspeed manually. Of course this was a matter of life and death to him. In the end he succeeded to fly across the Atlantic all alone in a time span of 33 hours. Imagine how tired he must have been. His plane was especially designed for this task, with a large fuel tank in the fuselage in front of Charles. So, in fact, he did not have a forward field of view. He preferred this situation over a design in which he would have to sit between the engine and the massive fuel tank. That could have been dangerous in case of emergency. Furthermore, there is not much to see outside when flying over the Atlantic. Now this concludes our calculations for maximum range and in the next lecture I will tell you more about maximum endurance for an aircraft.